Welcome to One on One with Mitch LaFauna. Joining me on this episode, it is drummer Joey Jordison of Vimic, formerly, of course, of Slipknot. We talk about new music, new albums, new tours, new everything. Before checking Joey out, please check me out on Twitter at Mitch Lafon, M-I-T-C-H-L-A-F-O-N. Should you care to support the podcast, and I could use all the support I could get, please head over to PayPal and make a donation at paypal.me forward slash Mitch Lafon. And with that, here is the one... The only, from the band Vimic, drummer Joey Jordison. We are speaking with Joey Jordison of the band Vimic. They've got up, upcoming U.S. shows and a European tour. And, of course, a new album coming out in 2017. A uh, pleasure to speak with you, Joey. Oh, man, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. I just have to say this really quick. Did you say Joey the Jordison? Because I'm going to use that from now on if that's what you said. <laughs> I, I I don't think I said that, but if I did, it's it's quite possible. <laughs> this this has been one of the longest days in my life, and and it, it's it just keeps getting longer and longer. But you know, hey, you gotta you gotta suck it up, Buttercup, and keep moving, right? So here we are. Um, yeah, man. Thank you very much for your time and, and the interview and all that stuff, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, no, it's it's, it's my pleasure. So l- let's talk about Vimic, um, because it's sort of a band that has risen out of the ashes of Scar the Martyr. Um, talk yeah. to me a little bit about how that band is, or, or how it's different from that other band, and what are we trying to say here? Um, what uh, You know, it's kind of weird to always say, um, before you answer the question, the thing is about this is, you know, Scar the Martyr, when I when I did that, you know, at the time, you know, it was another project. You know, we always did other projects, you know, when we're in Slipknot. You know, I always keep proactive. I think everyone knows, you know, like when I have time off, I'm always creating music and stuff like that. When I got done doing the, the time with Scar the Martyr and I fell ill, you know, I had to go through that whole regiment of rehabilitation and like, you know, going through the transverse myelitis and all that stuff. And basically, you know, with, you know, exiting Slipknot and stuff like that, kind of reinventing my career and, you know, my heart and where my music is at, I had to kind of just sit down and like, you know, I need everything new because, like, it just didn't feel right to keep, like, Scar the Martyr the same because it's a dark name and it meant something at the time. It really did. But, you know, now it, it doesn't mean that much. It's a really cool bridge and I really like the record. But, you know, with everything going so positive right now, I wanted to just change and, like, you know, just clean, wipe the slate clean and, you know, just restart. And everything's been so positive and everything, everyone that's been around me, you know, as far as, like, producers, engineers, of course, the band and everyone that's been involved and and my lady and just um, my family, everything, everything has been just really, really positive, man. Just ready to get back out there and give the music back to the fans and, you know, back to the music that meant so much to us, you know, like when we were growing up, you know, that's, this is what it's about, you know, otherwise we wouldn't do it. So we're very excited. Yeah. Okay. So let's, in fact, since you mentioned the, the, the illness, let's, let's talk a little bit about that transverse myelitis. Um, I I always under, was under the impression that that's something that you have sort of for the rest of your life. Is is that the case? Because you seem to be back in shape, back ready to tour. How much of an of an impact will it have on what you're able to do? Uh, right now, I don't think about that type of stuff because that's that's derogatory to my progress. You know what I mean? Okay, so, so I, I like, apologize for I, that. No, 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 dude. That's a great question. I'm glad that you asked. This is just, you know, and, and the fans need to know. Um, the thing is, you know, I just I constantly work out. I keep myself healthy. I I play now more than I've ever played. Like I probably practice probably five hours a day, and I just keep my chops up, man. Eat well, get plenty of rest, and looking forward to the future. When you have positivity in your life, and you have like a lot of great people around it, it breeds positivity. When there's you know, too much darkness around, that's when you can get yourself into deep trouble. And, you know, even though, like, I had no clue where this was going to come out of, you know, like, what happened to me, I beat it, you yeah. know? And, like, I, I I did. I got my ass in the gym. I busted, uh, you know, I just busted ass, you know, constantly, just in the gym, nonstop, getting myself better, 
and you know, it's the determination because man, I have to play music. I got to be on the road. You know, I got to give music back to the people that meant so much to me when, like, you know, they gave me, you know, my career and and my life and everything. So that's all I've been doing, man. I just I just work out and creating music, and I'm having fun in life right now. And, and you know, it's, it kind of sounds not so metal to say. You can have fun and still be out of your mind. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, but you know what? You, you you can you can be metal and have fun. I mean, you look at Rob Halford; he's Mister Metal, and I'm, he seems to be having fun. The Metallica guys seem to be having yeah. a, a lot of fun out there. You, you know that that's sort of an endearing story. The fact that you have this passion for the music to get you to where you are right now. Where did that passion come from? And, and sort of which bands or which music sort of set you up to where you just had to? You're so enamored with with music. You know, this, that's a good question, and it's cool. And uh, I'll never forget this, and the actual song. And this is actually really cool. It almost is a bookend to what we're talking right now, talking about right now, excuse me, is when I, my dad came home with a Rolling Stones record, Tattoo You. He came home with that, you know, after work, and he put it on the turntable, and the first song I heard was Start Me Up. At the same time, MTV was just coming out, and that was you know, one of the first videos that I got to saw at my aunt's house and my grandma's house, because we didn't have cable, but they did. And weirdly enough, it's almost like <laughs> like a bookend. It's like, that's the song that made me want to do music. I'm like, oh my God, that's what I mean. I saw Ronnie Wood come out with a guitar and, you know, Mick Jagger, the whole video is so dry and all that stuff. But like now it's kind of like the same type of thing. Like, you know, Rolling Stones Tattoo You, that, that record is really what started my pretty much passion for doing what I do now. That's great. Now, you know, Vimic is, is sort of one of these projects that have come along. We, we've mentioned Scar the Martyr. There was, of course, Murder Dolls and then Sinsanium, if I said that correctly. Where it, it, uh, it's Sinsanium. Sinsanium. See, there's too many uh, vowels in that in that letter for me to get it right. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's all right. It's all right, dude. Um, where where does where does Vimic sort of fit into these projects? Is it the band that's going to carry you in the future, or is it one of these sort of stops along the way? Whereas next year, if we talk again, we'll be talking about a new project. No, 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 absolutely not. I want to put that like in concrete right now. No, this this is my band. This is my passion. This is this is what I am doing right now. These two bands that I'm, the, you know, been able to form and have so many great counterparts as far as songwriting partners. Not only that, more importantly, more importantly, excuse me, friends. And you know, this is this is what I'm doing is Vimic and Sinsanum. Right now, I'm concentrating on Vimic. We'll get to Sinsanum, you know, later on in the year, probably like festival time or something like that. But, you know, I've got great, you know, shows coming up with uh, Vimic and, you know, the whole, the whole band is, man, it's just completely exciting. We could not wait to hit the stage, man. We are, are stoked. What, uh, what can fans expect when the band hits the stage? Is it going to be simply just the Vimic music or are you going to go back into the Slipknot catalog and sort of offer greatest hits if you want? No, we're not going to do that. We're just sticking straight to Vimic. That's all. And that's probably the way to do it. Now, Open Your Omen is going to come out in 2017. Uh, musically, how is it going to be different from those different from the other projects, from Murder Dolls, from Scar the Martyr? Because, you know, with Scar the Martyr, you've got almost the same players. Um, sonically, how is it going to be different? What are we offering? Well, what we're doing is, like, basically, you know, you, offering is, like, we have a new vocalist, which is my best friend in, in the world, pretty much, when it comes to, like, just a great soul and, and a you know just great friend. Period is, is uh, Kaylin Chase Musmeshi, who I toured with when I was in Corn, and it was a really hard choice actually to decide. You know, when I was transferring uh, Scar the Martyr over to Vimic, to call him because I knew he would kill the vocals. I knew like 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 completely deliver, deliver excuse me, and. I it was a it was a little bit of a tough decision, but like man, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. And you know, like he was really the cherry on top of the the whole cake, man. Like, and it's just been great ever since. Great energy. And I know that's what you're looking for in a band. Now, I know you want to stay positive, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask a little bit about Slipknot and and what happened there. Is that something we can do, or is that is that going to bring you back to a spot that you, you just don't want to go to? 
Uh, yeah, we need to stay away from that right now because that's under management um, kind of like constraints and stuff like that. So okay, that's... right now I will, I will, you know, I will delve into that, you know, a little bit later on. But like okay. for. No, no, fair enough, fair enough. Can can I ask you then sort of the positive aspects? What did that band, what did that band mean to you in terms of career and in terms of attaining your goals and just, because, you know, when we're all 10 years old and 13 years old and we have that tennis racket in front of the mirror, we all dream of being the rock star. And, you know, tell me about the positives about being that band and the first album and that whole experience. Uh, listen, man, like, I, I've said this in a million interviews. I don't know why I need to rehash it, but I will do it for you. Okay, I apologize. Um, yeah, no, it's okay. No, don't apologize, man. I get these questions all the time, right. you know. Um, without Slipknot, I would not necessarily be where I'm at today. And all those guys and everyone that I worked with, wrote with, the, all the producers, all the albums, all the tours, everything that we did, I can never, ever in a million years compact it into an interview right now of the great things that we did together. And I would not trade them for the world. Those guys are my brothers forever. I love them very much, and I wish them well. That's what I can say. And, and that, that's, that's, that, seems to be, that seems to be enough. Now, uh, in terms of sin- Sinsanium, which is hard for me to say. Sinsanium. Sinsanium. Um, Echoes of the Tortured came out earlier this year. Uh, Talk to me a bit about that album, if you can, and what it was like to be sort of in this more extreme metal group. Um, You know, when it started, I was on, it was, uh, you know, uh, Slipknot and Dragon Force. We we kept uh, crossing, you know, doing tours together. We're like, we had like, I can't even remember how many tours at this point, dude, it's a blur. But, you know, me and Fred, you know, we uh, had a mutual love for death metal and black metal and I, I it was very surprising to me that's why you never judge a book by its cover you know him being a dragon force and of course me and Slipknot and everything and uh, we just kept hanging out and I you know and I talked a long time ago you know even pr- prior to me touring with dragon force um, about doing a black metal slash death metal hybrid project Fred was the one that really kicked it into high gear and, uh, you know, it was, you know, it was a meeting of the minds, man, really. And, you know, all the stuff that he came up with and all the songs and everything that he wrote. As soon as he sent them to me, I was so inspired. I instantly booked studio time. I really, literally threw uh, my drums, like, in my truck and went down to the studio. Same place that I did, like, the Roadrunner United, same place I did All Hope Is Gone. Um, and uh, just tracked them, you know, and we got, you know, we got the ball rolling like that. And, and that's that's a great thing. Um, Murder Dolls. You were the guitarist yeah. in Murder Dolls. Um, have you considered being a guitarist in Vimic at some point and getting away from being behind the kit, or is that something that um, you you're more comfortable as the drummer? No, that, that's a, that's actually a good question. No, I'm always going to stay in Vimic. I'm always going to stay behind the kit live. In the studio and in writing sessions, I'm always on guitar. I mean, there's I don't, I don't need to call attention to how many riffs I wrote on, you know, uh, Open Your Omen or, you know, the new album, but I'm always writing, you know, and just because I might play drums in a band doesn't mean I'm, I'm not a songwriter in the band. I'm constantly writing. Right. Um, well, okay. Well, then talk to, me, talk to me a little bit about the writing process. What is sort of your way? Is it one of those where you just lock yourself in a studio and say, okay, I got 10 songs, let's get it done? Or is it sort of inspiration? No. no. Okay, so what's your writing process? My writing process it usually starts with like a handheld uh, cassette player. And I like doing it like this instead of like going into a studio and demoing. And I, I, do, I do it both ways. But the, the, how it always starts, and this is the origin, it's almost like just plant. It's almost like, you know, you plant a seed and wait for a flower to grow. I always just record like handheld, and all I do is, I have a click track and I just I have riffs and all I do is just riff out, riff out. Eventually I'll map out a whole song. Then I'll go into a studio by myself and I'll record like damn near an album's worth of complete material. After that, you know, I get it to all, you know, my counterparts that I'm creating music with and then like they'll start writing and like they'll get it back to me and we just start moving from there. That's how I always have done it. You've in the past. You've also produced 
other projects. Did you produce the new Vimic album? Uh, I didn't produce it, so to speak. Kata Quindala did it. Okay. But I was, you know, his right-hand man, so co-production credit I do have, yes. Would you consider producing a Vimic album? And, uh, well, let's start off with that. Would you consider producing one of the future ones? Yeah, I mean, we like I said, we have the material now. What we need to do is, you know, get ourselves out on tour, get this music out to the fans, connect with the fans. To the, it belongs to them now. It doesn't belong to us anymore. Like, it's done. It's now other people's music, if that makes any sense. It's like, now it belongs to them. So it's up to us to go out there and deliver it for them so they can come, get crazy, get in the pit, do what they need to do, you know, kind of just like have an exorcism, if you, if you will, you know, as far as like the music that we created. And then as soon as like, you know, we get back, you know, which I told you, like uh, the next record is pretty much written, but we just need to find out a place that we, where we want to record it and what producer we want and stuff like that. Right now, the focus is touring. Which brings us to Canada, which is where I am. When do you think Vimic might make it up here? Uh, you know what? <laughs> if I could be up there playing a show tonight, man, I would. Um, it all has to do with timing and schedules and routing. You know, like, that that's all it comes down to, really. So, uh, like, the sooner, the sooner uh, you know, we have this, like, it's actually being worked out now. It's just, like, we're doing, like, the whole, like, since it's the end of the year, it's a little weird. You know, we, we have the end, end of the year shows, but, like, now, right now, they are doing the whole uh, next year run, which is going to probably run until a, maybe end in Halloween or something like that. I'm not totally sure. I can't say for sure, but we will, we we would never can't count it out. Like the the fans up there are just absolutely insane and like absolutely had nothing but great great experiences there. Every time I played there, I haven't had a bad show in Canada yet. No, you know Canada is is great for for metal and and you know metal bands. It is, man. It's very metal. Oh, it's a great, it's a great, especially Quebec. Quebec is 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 killer for that. Um. Uh, what was I going to say? Murder Dolls, you had Mick Mars come in and play on a track. Um, what was that experience yeah. like to have Mick in there? Because he also has, um, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to call it a disease. What would be a, you know, he has an issue that he deals with. Um, what was it like to have him come in and be part of what you were doing at the time? You know, it, <laughs> it was really funny because... Um... Our uh, tour manager and actual, you know, house manager, you know, studio manager at the time, you know, connected with him because he had tour managed uh, Motley Crue. And we're like, at the time, we're like, when we're doing this song, Drug Me to Hell, we're like, my God, man, it's just got, like, it just, just sounds like it needs a Mick Mars, you know, type solo on it, you know, and our tour manager at the time, of course, was doing Molly Crew. He's like, I'll call him up. We'll get him down here. I'm like, no, you're ne- that's never going to happen. He called him up. Mick was like, absolutely. Came right down, plugged his guitar in, like hardly said a damn word. And like, like he was, he played louder than you would ever imagine and just screeched his soul out. And we were like, we we're so like blown away. We we're like, that's it. Don't, <laughs> he's like, you guys like that? I'm like, that's perfect. So like that tape that you hear is pretty much him, like first take all the way through. That's yeah. how much he rules. That's how much he rules, dude. He sat down like ultimate rockster, like plugged in, had like the board turned up louder than hell, almost where his guitar was feedbacking off the speakers. Cranked the solo out, and it was done. That's classic Mick Mars, and and you know when you're sitting in the studio with him, and he's been on the road and having done this for 30 or 40 years, does he offer you any advice? Does he, does he look at you and say, Hey boys, you know, make sure you do this or do that or put some money away for the, for your retirement. Or, I mean, what was that like? And any kind of. No, he was, no, no, we didn't get involved in any of that stuff, man. He was strictly business. Like I said, like he walked up with his guitar, said his hello to everybody. We chatted for a little bit, just about, you know, life. He plugged his stuff in crank the soul out pretty much in like two takes and then packed his guitar up and was like, thank you guys for the opportunity. I really like the song. Thank you for this. And then took off. That was it. God, <laughs> that, that's like typical. in and out, man. There was no like hanging out and watching TV or, or party and nothing. He came in business style, cranked it out and he was gone. That's great. That's, that's typical Mick. And um, imagery, 
uh, Slipknot, of course, Murder Dolls, a uh, lot of imagery going on. How important that is, is that to you, to the live performance and to the music? Um, it depends on what the band, the band's message is, what the songs are like, and what you're trying to portray. Um, you know, to have an image, just to have an image is not good. Because you're going to come across as, you know, fake or trying too hard, and it will not seem real. Like, you either really have, like, an image. It's it's never an image to me. Like, Slipknot's never an image. Like, we always said, you know, people like, you wear a mask. Like, no, we don't. We don't wear masks. I mean, that's that's us. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with my imagery and all the stuff that I've done, whether it be me and Satyricon or, or Rob Zombie or or the Murder Dolls. I don't wear masks, man. Like, I, I don't. I, that's the person that you get on stage is actually me. I'm not trying to convince or portray an image of, of something that I'm not, because that is actually how I feel. That is actually a part of my heart, part of my musical soul and something that goes along with the music that I'm creating at that time. Like I, I don't get the ma- the ma- the mask thing, you know, okay. like I understand, I understand the question. <laughs> And that's totally cool, dude, because you should ask that. And I, I'm really grateful for the question. But I just, I don't, I don't wear a mask. What you see when I'm on stage is exactly how I feel. I'm not right. trying to sell myself. What I'm trying to do is accentuate the music that I'm feeling at that time. Yeah, and, 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 and it, that certainly wasn't meant in a, in a dismissive way. In fact... I'm, oh, dude, not at all. No, because I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of Kiss and, and stuff, and... What attracted me to the band was the look, you know, and it was the fact that they became sort of iconic, and there's an iconic iconography to it. Um, that's what. Hey, I, I'm right with you, dude. Yeah, and that, and I'm that's right with you. and that that's part of the attraction, I think. If you're going to be a band and, and you just sort of show up in your, you know, board shorts and your open toe sandals, you're, you're probably doing somewhat of a disservice to the music because you're just not very entertaining to watch and and so i'm i'm of the opinion that slipknot and kiss and you and rob zombie and alice cooper you've got it right i mean that's what it should be oh dude thank you i appreciate that and that's what it's always been about for me you know (laughs) is there's the music which is of course first and foremost the most important thing but to me like i don't like to go to like still to this day i don't like to go to a show like, you don't have to have makeup on or a bunch of weird costumes or whatever the hell. You don't. To put, on, put, to put on a good show. But at the same time, like, if you know what you're doing and you know how to construct it right, it enhances the show so much more. And I'm still, a, you know, look, you go to Circus Soleil. What do you go to Circus Soleil to watch them, like, just walk around the stage? Hell no. Well, it, well that's exactly <laughs> it. No, but that's exactly it. And, and, and you know, it's sort of like... If you or, or Corey Taylor or even, you know, Selena Gomez sat on the side of the stage and read the lyrics and, and you'd be bored out of tears. It'd be the same song, but you would be bored out of your mind. And so yeah, you need that visual aspect. By the way, you, you mentioned Satyricon real quickly. Um, you replace Frost very on short notice. He sort of couldn't get into the United States visa issues. Yeah. Um, how was that for you? Because that's, that's, that's more of, well, again, you know, it is extreme metal and you sort of do the other stuff, but was that complicated to learn that kind of stuff on short notice and like, hey, uh, can you join us next week? I mean, how, how was that experience for you? You know, it, it was actually, you're absolutely right. I mean, like when I got the call to do that, of course I jumped at it because I'm like, you know what? Uh, it would be something that, like right now, if we were talking and I knew that I had that opportunity, and I, and I turned it down. I, it would be something that I regret, regret for the rest of my life. So, like, literally when I got the call, and I didn't have much time to learn. I remember being at, you know, my old parents' house in the basement, sitting there watching TV. I'm like, oh, my God. So, like, I was talking to everyone, and get, like, getting everything straightened. And I got the set list. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, having to learn all this stuff in this short amount of time, and it's... <laughs> Not that necessarily it's, it's not necessarily playing Kiss songs. <laughs> you know? so it was it was definitely a um, probably one of the biggest math tests I've taken in such a short period of time. Talk about it, like you know you gr- you know you grind for like a, a 
you know, a, you know, a test, you know, to take or algebra or whatever you, whatever you got, man. And like, you have to show up and deliver with some people that you don't even know. And like, they come from, you know, they're, they're from a different part of the, the world and I'm over here, but you know, I stepped up to the challenge and it was, a, it was an, a great tour, man. Like, and I learned so much from those guys cause they are some of the best musicians honestly I've ever played with in my life. And like what's what's cool about you know, even even with the language barrier. Um But music music much, has no language, how, right? Huh? But music has no language. You, you, right? You get in there and you no, just no, you no, feel it, it right? No, no. No, not at all. Music has no language. But we were like when we were in rehearsal, they they all speak English. But <clears throat> like we we're sitting there and we were like in the rehearsal and we were going through these songs, man. They were so absolutely supportive of if I made a mistake, they were like, no problem. Here, here's how it goes. And then we'd stop. We'd go through a section. And they, you know, I learned a lot, man, from the, from those guys, like tons. And, it, you know, the tour went off great besides, you know, the hiccup, whatever. But other than that, man, I learned a lot from, from those dudes. And it was, it was killer. Yeah, those guys were killer. And I, I know we're running out of time here. So um, you did mention, of course, uh, playing in Corn, and, of course, Rob Zombie, when Tommy left, uh, I guess he left to join Black Sabbath, or was that early? Anyway, um, what's it like now in Vimic sort of being the boss? And, and is that, you know, if you had another opportunity to go join a band like Zombie and sort of be a fill-in, would you? Or are you sort of, you know, I, I like Vimic and being the guy. Um, I don't think of it like that. Like okay. Vimic, even even if I'm, I might be considered the boss, I don't look at it like that because to me, everyone has an equal say as much as I do. Otherwise, it's not a team. You know, you always have a coach. I guess I am the coach. But as far as like everyone being equal members <clears throat> of like the band, you don't want to oust anyone because you want everyone to produce and feel a part of the team and have. Right. Eagles say, like, if I have to veto something, that's one thing. But, like, as far as, like, being open and honest and, like, constructing what we're doing and what we're about to do all this next year, like, to everyone has a say because we are a band. This isn't, this isn't, uh, this is, this is, you know, an absolute open, open floor, open table because when it's like that, everything goes better. Yeah, and, and and by the way, it, you sound so very very excited about the next year. That it's it's refreshing to hear a musician who's just geared up and just ready to go. It, it's it's very very positive and uh, absolutely. Thanks, man. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, I'm I'm very much looking forward to it. Hopefully, you'll get over to Montreal. And uh, you know, thank you, thank you. For I love today. it there, man. That's like I love playing there. I love playing there. So no matter what. I'll just, after this interview, I'll just call and be like, hey, man, if we don't go to Montreal, I'm in deep shit. This interview. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> but you got, you got to get to Montreal. It, it's sort of the place. Uh, it's the place to be. And, of course, I saw you with Slipknot at the uh, Bell Center, or maybe it was the Molson Center at the time. Oh, man, yeah. It was a killer show, and I've got some killer pictures because I was in the pit taking pictures, killer pictures of you. And, um, you know, you've always delivered. Every project you've done has always been... Um, very much pedal to the metal and there's no compromise there's no calling it in there's there's it's serious rock and roll and that's that's what i like and so i appreciate that and and, and thank you and and vimic is i can't wait to hear the music honestly it's going to be it's going to be special oh, you're gonna, dude when you it's like yeah there's a couple songs that but when you hear the album like in its entirety the way it's structured it is actually like listening to a movie like each song the way it bleeds into each other that's the way it's supposed to be listened to. It's almost like one song to me. But I really hope, like, you know, listeners, like, when they actually, when they get Open Your Omen, it's called Open Your Omen for a reason. You know, I know there's, you know, we got, we got a few tracks on, like, but, like, when you hear it in its entirety all the way through, that's when you're going to get the real picture, man. So that, thank you very much for that compliment. And, like, I can't wait for you to hear it, dude. I'm really excited. Thank you very much. For the, you're for very the welcome. And, and it's interesting, by the way, just, I know we're going over here, but, that an artist talks about albums because that whole concept of albums has been lost. I mean, everybody's down to the single or even the song. 
And it's interesting to hear somebody still talk about a whole album and that it has a meaning and a purpose. And so, um, you know, good on you for that because that's it, it should. Thanks, man. It should, right? I mean, yeah. Well, you'll, you'll you'll hear it like when you hear it from the very beginning, and you see the way the track listing is, and you listen to the lyrics. It's a story. Pay attention to it. I'm like, that's all I can say. A lot of people like to sell themselves with this thing. Is an absolute story. That's why it's called Open Your Omen. It's almost like my my own personal story from from years. And now this this whole thing is probably one of the most important records, and it's it's a graduation piece to the rest of my life. Ah, can't wait. And uh, good. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for everything today. And uh, you know, 2017 man is going to be a great year. It's going to be a great year, man. I can't wait to see you and, like, you know, shake your hand. And thank you for your time and, you know, all, all your kind words and everything, man. I could not be more thankful. Well, it's funny. And, and yeah, you're very welcome. And it's funny because as we were talking, you mentioned uh, that you didn't want to go negative. I, I was looking at some of my questions, and, I, and they, they sort of had un, unintended negative. So I changed everything up on the last, as we were talking, to try to keep it in the positive, And I'm glad I did because you know what? that's what it should be. Thank you. This is how it's supposed to go. You know what? That just made my day, man. And that, on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you. And thank you. And I will see you soon. And thank you so much again for this opportunity and the interview. And we will see you soon on the road, man. I can't wait. Cheers. So say hi. Absolutely. Thank you. Cheers, man. Bye-bye now. And there you have it, folks. My interview with Joey from the band Vimic, formerly of Slipknot. Please check me out on Twitter at Mitch Lafon, M-I-T-C-H-L-A-F-O-N. Head over to TalkingMetal.com for all of my interviews. And uh, if you can, please support the podcast at paypal.me forward slash Mitch Lafon. And with that, I bid you a fond farewell. See you later. Au revoir, a vie de and all the other ways you say goodbye in this world. Uh, bye for now. Oh my.